Reason number one. One common thing that we see is from the bottom, guys pulling down on top, trying to hold him here. Uh, or he does have frames and he's trying to bench press them all of them <laughs> up, in, up in the air. It, it doesn't really work. All right. So a good frame, blade, frame in the hip pocket with your wrist bone, not your hand. And you're not bench pressing them up, working them down your body. All right. Reason number two. All right. Another common problem that we have is that the person on bottom is putting their hand on their, their hand, <laughs> their foot on their thigh and they're locking their partner above their hip bone. Ideally to escape, I gotta have freedom to slide my knee in. How am I gonna do that if I'm pushing them, basically locking them into like a high guard? It doesn't make sense. So leave your leg out and monitor in case my, my partner wants to try and mount, this is free. All right, it's also gauging where the hip pocket is on my partner. Right. Reason number three. All right, um, another problem that we're having an issue, an issue with, is once my frames are in place, I'm working my partner down my body, not bench pressing up. I'm not being lazy with this. I'm engaging this. I do my hip movement out. I start to escape. I don't address this. I'm here. And all my partner does is step over this leg and he's back in the same spot. All right. So frames, hip out, my movement, I frame on the inside. So even if he starts to come around the hip or whatnot, I'm framing, I have to start recovering. Yeah. Reason number four. Another reason why you don't get out of side control is massive shrimp. Okay, when we're in side control, good side control, we're trying to get our frames in. Once we get our frames in, we're trying to get this knee in. And a common mistake is to really, really try to, to push this guy off and come way up here to get your whole knee in, like this. And we don't really need to do that. Waste a lot of energy. And what we can do is, we're keeping this up here, not like this, but like this, it's a little bit more dynamic. And as we do our small hip escapes here, our knee ratchets into the hip bone here. Once we feel the hip bone, we have something to push off of. So now we can use our frames and use that right there. Right there. It doesn't have to be across. We can work that in across after, just here, to push off and then get in. Reason number five. So this is more of a proactive approach to side control. When he's coming in, the concept is to stop the leading edge. And a lot of people, when they, when they start getting past, they look for a wrist and they look for this. But what they don't look for is the head. Now, the, when it comes down to pass, usually the head is the leading edge. You'll see that's in front of everything. So what we can do, if we redirect the head to the side, as he comes down, we're just, we can monitor this arm, but we don't have to go across like this. You put two across and that's just a recipe for disaster. So as he's coming in, we can monitor this, engage his head, and now we just come out and push it down to the mat. We don't push it away up here because now we're extending our arm and exposing it. We do a purposeful shrimp, bring his head down to the mat, kind of like an arc. So as he comes down, we just go in here. And if he keeps coming in, we start to stiff arm and you can see how far away I am. Usually capture this arm. And another point with the head is if he does get to a low side control, kind of down on the hips, I'll use two hands. Usually it's right about here. Two hands, hip, and as I drop down, I'm not gonna drop straight down, I'm gonna drop to the side a little bit, and I'm going to pass his head like a Russian twist in the gym with a uh, medicine ball. Just gonna go bring it to the side, and now I can get into a guard here.